Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and this is a post commentary of footage that I had playing Dark Souls 3 at the St. Louis Comic Con. Uh, this was recorded on April 2nd, 2016, by my lovely wife Jessica. You might hear a little bit of background chatter from us as I'm talking and stuff like that, but I realized that the audio was just not very good, and I figured that the video is just not going to be very good by itself, so I decided to do a post-commentary uh, to explain some thoughts that I've had with the game. Okay, so the game has finished loading, and now we're finally playing Dark Souls 3 for the first time. I decided to select the Assassin class, since he has a spear as well as a small shield. This ideally would make him a very fast character, but I noticed that he isn't as fast as I liked. And so I did struggle quite a bit with this playthrough. I did later visit the demo again to play as the Cleric, which noticeably was slower. However, the power of his mace certainly made up for that. And made combat a lot more fun and easy to engage in this game. Okay, so I was able to successfully get to the bonfire. I decided to check the options out. However, there weren't any other options at the bonfire. So at this point, we're left to our own machinations, and it's time to explore. So I see the staircase, which is easily the most logical choice to descend down, and we encounter the skeletal dogs here. They behave much in the same way as dogs in other Dark Souls games. They're very fast, not quite the most predictable, but they're fairly weak and can be taken out with just a couple of hits. Oh, there's a guy with a torch or something. Oh, that was his torch that fell down. I don't think you should talk, you should just play and then do it over voice. Oh yeah, I probably will do that. <laughs> and you can thank my wife for her excellent point of view on this. That's why I decided to do the video like this rather than just doing the raw footage. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, I dealt with the dogs here, and now we've got this guy with the giant halberd. He is clearly kicking my butt, so I have to retreat and use the Estus Flask. Oh, he hits hard. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm thinking like every other action game where you use square instead of R1 to attack. And right on cue, I say something stupid. I always tend to do this and when I'm trying to be on the point like this. But we were able to successfully defeat the enemy without too much trouble. Uh, but we did burn through the Estus Flasks. So I decide to retreat. And yes, that means we unfortunately have to redo it again. And I finally discover there's this crossbow guy. There was actually a moment earlier where I was talking about torches. It was actually him shooting a fire arrow at me. So there was somebody in the background that was yelling, Ethan, Ethan, for some reason. I'm not sure what that was about. Um, there's some whole internet craze about Ethan. I don't know, maybe somebody can explain this to me. But anyways, I was explaining to my wife uh, what was going on, why I was retreating and redoing this stuff. You know, I was explaining what was going on with it because she isn't 100% familiar with the game. And this was kind of a learning experience, you know, for both of us, really. I mean, I'm already versed in the Dark Souls games. I don't think she's ever watched me play any of them. I actually had to kind of con her a little bit in order to uh, record this footage, but I still thank her very much. I'm very grateful that we had a chance to check this out before the game was actually officially released in the US. At this point, I decided to experiment with the magic. Yes, it's a great sword. Come on. Oh, it's actually a. Uh... not going very well so far. It's very hard. <laughs> so I think the, the controls are a little laggy, but it's just a demonstration thing. I just wanted to really check this out. So. Okay, so at this point I was explaining there was some input latency at the demo station. It was very noticeable. It was probably at least four or five frames behind. So I learned my lesson from the crossbow guy and decided to go ahead and take him out first before we worry about anybody else. So now we're going to go ahead and try to recover our souls and move on a bit further. 
Wow, that's so heirloom. You gotta be quick about it because it's very delayed. Alright, so you pick up the souls so that you get your stuff back. So at this point, we have three different spells that we can use with the Assassin. The Soul Arrow, the Soul Dart, and the Soul Greatsword. They essentially all do the same kind of thing, which is magic damage. The Soul Arrow is just like we remembered it from the original Dark Souls games. Although I noticed that the gameplay was certainly a bit faster. It's a little more closer to Bloodborne uh, than, say, Dark Souls 1 or 2. So it's not really the most ideal attack in these scenarios. However, the soul dart is very fast, and I really appreciate the addition of that. Oh, I had a torch also? I didn't know that. Okay, check it out. So at this point, I learned that there's actually three item slots uh, for the left and right hands, rather than just two. This was actually a bit of a revelation to me, because I've purposely kept myself out of the loop because I wanted to explore as much as possible on day one, but I could not resist trying this game at Comic-Con, so that's why we're here. Ooh, perfect dodge. Ah, oh, but he's still strong. He still hits. Whoa, well, where am I? Okay, unlock him. Unfortunately, at that point, we learned that the camera issues that have plagued the past games are still here. Uh, camera control is paramount to controlling the fights. Unfortunately, the camera has not improved the algorithms in order to more intelligently handle things automatically. So you still have to be very quick on the right stick. Oh, I didn't see that guy. Just in time. So, despite my personal failings, I was able to successfully surmount the enemies and dispatch with them easily enough. Probably just a couple more minutes. I don't want to spoil this. Really? Song. Yeah, just a couple. Uh, let's see. This goes. isn't worth trading for a backpack. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I lied a bit. It wasn't exactly a con. I had to carry her backpack in order to have this opportunity. But hey, no shame, right? It's worth it to play Dark Souls 3. Yeah. There's a new gesture system. If you want to see that. And unfortunately, after we encounter the next guy after this one, the game has an abrupt crash, and the recording pretty much stops there. But I thank you guys very much for taking a look at Dark Souls 3 with me for the first time. I will be streaming this game on April 12th, right here on this channel. And if you're interested in getting a Dark Souls 3 keychain, please leave a comment below. So here are the closing thoughts on this video. Is that it? Or did the TV go out? Hey, you're done. Yeah, I guess so. That's uh, that's all I get to play. So, thanks for watching. Till then, down, Phoenix out.